Okay, guys, well, since it's kind of boring here today, November the 10th should be deer running everywhere, but they're not. Um, I've actually had some history with this stand, and um, a hunt that went down in this woods uh, five years ago and four years ago have really um, changed what I do with my broadhead setups. And I want to talk about that real quick today, and I might get a little long-winded with it, but um, a few years ago, I shot a, a buck, a, I think he was a big four-year-old, um, with one of those over-the-top expandable broadheads. I was still using those at the time, and uh, he was out there at 40 yards, and I pinwheeled him. I hit him right in the triceps muscle, and... I mean, the arrow just barely went into him because of that rapid deceleration of the shaft. Um, those over-the-top design broadheads that catch tissue and have to open are some of the worst uh, broadheads on the planet when it comes to their energy efficiency. When you have an over-the-top expandable that hits tissue and has to create drag to open those blades, it rapidly decelerates that projectile. And then the body gets to act on the projectile because it's passing through the body slower. So if, if you're looking here, if, if my fingers are like the ribs, right? If, say, you hit him in the triceps muscle, but it's going slower through there, that triceps muscle contracts as he ducks to run and it will pinch the shaft up against those uh, ribs and it'll further continue that deceleration. Um, I had another incident right here where I shot a buck literally at 10 yards with one of those over-the-top design broadheads, a buck we call Preacher. He was broadside. I will admit my uh, injury was a little too far cranial caught the edge of the scapula with that over-the-top design and just massively decelerated it. I got about maybe 50% penetration on it, right? And you're going to say, well, Doc, it's all about shot placement. Okay, fine. Well, that deer run out there about 18, 20 more yards on a quartering away angle, and I got another one of those arrows with another one of those expandable blade broadheads on and shot him uh, on the opposite side of where I shot him to begin with. And guess what I got on that? Incomplete penetration, halfway through, uh, on a pass through, and I didn't hit bone structure there. I worked my tail off trying to find that buck and we finally found him laying over there dead about 250 yards away. Two incomplete pass throughs sticking out of both sides of him, okay? So I changed it up a little bit, went totally different. Now I'm using these iron wheel two blades, right? No moving parts, no rapid deceleration. It cuts like a needle scalpel right through them. And I've taken about, um, I don't know, I've taken about a dozen animals with it. Uh, my pass through rate with a 550 grain combination, 570 now, uh, it's been 100% and my recovery rate, 100%. Now, again, I'm not a sponsy. Nobody gives me their broadheads, and I don't have an ax to grind with a broadhead company that I think is inferior. But I'm telling you this right now. These iron wheel broadheads are such bad medicine for whitetails. They will go through any anatomy that you put them through, anything. I run... Um, I run these Black Eagle Spartans, and I run about 75 grains of brass up front, and this is the S150 wide. Um, the buck I just shot wild side just a couple days ago, shot him at eight steps, watched him fall in 40 yards, passed to him so fast I thought I'd missed him for a second. Like, and the reason why this design works versus those like over-the-top design broadheads, look how simple it is. It's like a little tiny wedge. It's got these little bleeders. Now these bleeders are a trade-off. 
they create a little bit of tissue drag, but you don't have three giant grippy blades that have to hit tissue resistance, slow the shaft down, and allow the body's forces to continue to manipulate that shaft. The faster you can get your arrow to go through the animal, the better. And I get so tired of seeing these posts on social media and in magazines and on uh, commercials and guys that are pro staffing for these expandable broadheads. Guys, it ain't about blood trails, okay? The force we're using to put white tails down on the ground is something called hypoxia, low oxygen going to the brain. Okay, great blood trails are awesome. We all love to see that big red carpet pushed out there, right? But we are not killing these animals via exsanguination. We are killing them with hypoxia. Now, exsanguination facilitates hypoxia, but so does getting that complete pass through, collapsing both of those lungs. Lungs are at a lower pressure than atmospheric air. So when we create that bilateral uh, what, what old timers in the military used to call a sucking chest wound. You create that bilateral lung wound on both sides, atmospheric pressure rushes in and collapses those lungs. Those guys walk, uh, run out there about 100 yards, get dizzy on their feet, pass out before they die. Now ideally you like to clip something under pressure, an aorta, um, vena cava, the heart itself, pulmonary arteries, what have you. Um, but when you think about hypoxia, think pass-through. And if you think pass-through, think fixed blades, period. End of discussion. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you on down the road.